say we did in the Western world and in, in the countries I've mentioned, we did manage, and this is just a massive uh, thought experiment, throw off the shackles of statism. How do we trust other countries, like say the kind of um, Oriental bloc, for example, that I've just mentioned, from saying, ah, what a wonderful amount of free-range uh, Caucasian humans we have now. Let's go and farm them. They've got all this great knowledge. Let's farm them the way we farm the guys in China, impose our one-child policy, we'll, we'll do this, we'll restrict travel. Do you think the emancipation from statism is some... Mine, I'm asking you ten questions. Mm, no, no, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's a good question. How do we defend ourselves as a free land? How would we defend ourselves against aggressive states? Because it's not all going to happen at once, of course, right? Well, um, <clears throat> first of all, I mean, there's a very... And I, I talk about this in my free book, uh, Practical Anarchy, so I'll just touch on it briefly here. It's at freedomainradio.com forward slash free for people who want to download it uh, for free or read it online for free. But um, uh, first of all, there's a basic historical fact that no nuclear power has ever been attacked, right? So no, no geographical area that has nuclear weapons has ever been attacked. It's mutually assured destruction. It's the ultimate um, uh, deterrent. So given that that's the case, um, let's say that you're in a country of, like America, 300 million people or whatever, you know, it, it costs maybe $300 million a year to run a couple of nukes and keep them in silos. So this would be a dollar a year from everyone. And let's say half of the people can't pay. That's $2 a year. Let's say half of the people don't care about paying, so it's $4 a year. I would pay $4 a year to uh, ensure that uh, I wasn't going to be invaded by another country. I think just about everyone would. Uh, and those who would, who didn't want to would, you know, other people would double up or whatever. So it's not expensive to defend, right? And national defense is very cheap. National offense uh, or invading other countries around the world, particularly the Middle East and south of Russia, that is expensive. So defense is actually very cheap. Plus, of course, there's no restriction on weaponry, uh, no state restriction on weaponry. There may be insurance restrictions on weapon weaponry in, a, in a, a free country. But most importantly, you can't invade a non-country. Because the reason, like so, take um, uh, Germany to, uh, invading France in, in 1940. Why did Germany invade France in 1940? Well, two reasons. One, it wanted the, 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 the weaponry, so it wanted the guns and it wanted the tanks so that it could use them. But number two, and most importantly, it wanted to collect the taxes. Right, so the reason the people invade uh, other countries is to take over the tax system and so that you can reap all of the domesticated cows' taxes, right? But in a, a free society, there is no tax collection system. And there is no vast amounts of weaponry because you just have defensive nukes. So you'd go into this country and there'd be all these people, but there would be no government for you to take over and start taxing people with. So then you'd have to try and tax, you'd have to try and create an entire tax system in a fervently anti-tax culture where you don't know what weapons everyone has. There's just no way. There's no way that that would ever happen. In the same way that if you're standing like a, a fork in the road and you want to take over two guys uh, and one guy has a farm where the cows are already domesticated and you already have your shipments and you already have your economic setup and your, your payroll and all that. So if you go and take over that guy's farm, you just put yourself in his place and you get all the milk and everybody shows up to work. That's all running beautifully. Whereas another guy just has a big empty uh, lot with a whole bunch of jungle and wood, wood stuff in it, right? Uh, where you'd have to go in and you'd have to make your own farm. Well, there wouldn't be... You, of course you're going to go for the farm that already exists and take that one over, rather than go to just some <laughs> wilderness, in a sense, which is completely disorganized, where there's no existing farm you can take over. It's just not economically productive to take over a non-enslaved area, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I know. So it's kind of, um, one doesn't need to be a philosopher or even an intelligent person to see that it's a lot harder to domesticate wild animals or wild humans than it is to kind of re-domesticate domesticated animals. Um, my next question, uh, Steph, is um, one that which many people have asked me because I go out there on the street and I kind of say my whole anarchist bit and say, look, it's, don't be scared and so forth without states. But then they say to me, Okay, well, are you against uh, corporations? And I say, well, big evil corporations that use violence, like Halliburton, backed by the American government, or British oil companies, which are backed by MI6, which assassinate people, yes. But then they say to me, Charlie, how do you feel, like, how, do, how are you so certain that companies, like voluntary, you know, syndicates, wouldn't bring in their own private militias to enforce their own terror upon the people. So, right. Steph, how would you answer that? If people say to you, Steph, oh, well, you want to get rid of the state? Well, then, um, you know, Shell would just have a Shell private army. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, this is the tragedy of people who don't know anything about economics. And uh, it, it, it really is a tragedy. This is just a scare story. Um, 
because let's say that there's there's Shell and there's Exxon in a free society. And Shell, at some crazy ass uh, board meeting, the CEO says, that's it, I've had it with this fucking competition. Let's just go get a huge army of black helicopters populated by squids with lasers. And uh, <laughs> I want uh, barrels of monkeys, uh, and I want like all uh, pathogens, and I want every ghastly thing in the world to rain down on our customers, because I've had it with trying to win them over with commercials. It's time to kidnap their children and lock them up with termites, and that's how we're going to get our money. And let's say the entire board is insane and decides to go along with this. Well, then what happens is this, uh, this company, company A, let's say, they have to start raising the prices of their oil. Why? Because they have to go and buy all this shit, right? So let's say that it costs them half a billion dollars to go. That money has to come from somewhere. And so what's going to happen is they're going to have to raise the prices on their customers. Or they're have to going to go heavily into debt, which their shareholders aren't going to want. And they're also, so immediately people will say, well, I don't want to pay another dollar a, a, a gallon for gas. I mean, that's crazy. So they'll just go to the other company. And then this company will be starved of resources. Now, everybody in the business world would know this up front. And I have spent some time as an entrepreneur and on board. So this is what happens. When you try and present a business plan to a, a board of directors, uh, the first thing you get is 12 million questions about how it's not going to work. So if I say, listen, I want half a billion dollars to go and made, make our own army then the immediate thing is, well, how are we going to pay for this? Well, we're going to increase the customer's uh, price? Well, then everyone's just going to go to our competition, so forget that, right? So that's just... Now, let's say even if that passes, though, you then have to go find somebody who's willing to sell you half a billion dollars worth of arms. And uh, that's going to be pretty visible. And where are you going to store them? Everybody's going to be completely aware that you're bringing in all of these helicopters with squids with lasers on their tentacles or whatever. So everyone's going to see it, and then everyone's going to say, well, shit, I'm not buying from these guys. They're making an army. And so forget it. I'm not going to... The last thing I want is another state back, so I'm just going to stop doing business with these guys. And the electricity company is going to stop sending you electricity. And you, you, the water company is going to stop sending you water. And everybody's going to just close ranks and say, fuck off, you assholes. We are not taking this shit anymore. We are not going back to the Middle Ages. We're not going back to the 21st century. We're not going back to statism. So set all these squids free, and let's move on. Absolutely. Steph, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, I agree. I mean, you're right. Where where would they find the money to raise an army? Um, but then people say I did. I explained to them what you've just said. And then they go, oh, well, a company might like Shell could quite cheaply and on the sly hire, say, 12 highly trained Bosnian assassins and cause havoc that way. Or they may um, or they may, as Noam Chomsky calls it, they may manufacture consent in the public with uh, by buying the media and so forth. So, well, sorry, sorry, but uh, uh, if if they start buying the media, they again they go into debt. They have to start to uh, uh, raise all of this capital to do it, which means they have to raise the prices of their. Uh, uh, even if they start taking over all the media, um, what that means is that people want to be fed lies. But if people want to be fed lies, we're not in a free society already, right? So people who are raised in a free society are going to be obviously much more productive and much more free. They don't have to wait till they're 25 to start their real jobs. Uh, they can do it, you know, at, at 15 or whatever. I mean, I've been mostly on my own and working since I was, oh, I've mostly on my own since I was 15. I've had a job since I was 11. Loved it. Loved the freedom, loved the productivity. But there won't be all of these massive delays. People are going to get an education that is going to teach them critical thinking and reasoning. They're not going to be uh, as easy prey for sophists and manipulators. They're going to be skeptical. They're going to be uh, philo philosophical. They're going to know about economics. And look, if you're really, if, if people are really worried, right? This is something I, I, I did a speech in, in Phoenix last month uh, at um, Ernie Hancock's Freedom Summit. And I'll just give you the very, very brief synopsis of it here. But what I like to do with people like that, Charlie, is I say, okay, well, let's say, let's take the worst case scenario. So I'm defense company A. And I provide uh, geographical defense or for, you know, some combination of geographical defense for this area of land. Well, the first thing is I'm going to have to sell my services to people. And the first question I'm going to get asked is, well, how the hell do we know, Steph, that you're not going to be some clusterfuck asshole and, and take over, uh, uh, you know, we're going to give you all this money for defense and then you're going to just take us over. And I'll be like, okay, so let's say I'm the skeptical customer and you're the defense company. How are you going to sell me and like, turn it around? Instead of you providing the answers, which they can then just shoot down, flip it around. Turn it around. Say, okay, you sell me your defense services. So let's try that. So let's say I'm the skeptical customer and you are the defense agency who wants my business. And I say, well, how, how do I know you're not going to just turn on me? 
what would you say? Huh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Well, um, you would uh, you would probably say something like, and I mean, if you've never been much of an entrepreneur, then I mean, there's no reason you'd know this stuff. But you'd say stuff like, okay, well, uh, here's here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to tell you. Uh, exactly how many uh, tanks or, or bombs or, or aircraft carriers or nuclear weapons I have every year. And I guarantee I'm never going to go over that, for sure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put $10 million into an account, and anybody who finds, I'm going to open up my entire facilities to everyone, anybody who finds that I have a single bullet more than I claim, I will give them the $10 million. Anybody can come in and look around. Top, bottom, all the doors are unlocked. Everything's an open book. You can check it out online. You can you can fly webcam drones through my facilities if you want. You can do anything that you want. And if you find that I've overstated anything, then uh, I, I will give you this $10 million. I mean, that's just one way you could do it. I mean, there, there could be a, any number of other ways. But you would need to find some way of reassuring people that you were never, ever going to turn on them. Uh, and, and companies like there'd be 100 defense companies trying to compete to be the safest for people to trust, if that makes any sense. Uh, and of course, any any um, uh, any company that did start building additional uh, guns and bombs and planes, they would have to raise their prices to pay for it, and that would be a clear signal to everyone that they were up to no good. Like they'd either go to some big loan, they'd have to go to a bank for half a billion dollars to build up their army, and the bank would say, "What the hell are you doing? I'm not going to give you this money to build an army because I'm a bank. I don't want there to be a big army here, right?" Or the cust they'd have to charge their customers. Or they'd have to pay less money to their shareholders, in which case the shareholders would dump the stock and they'd all go out of business. So when you have a free society, there's a very fine equilibrium in terms of prices and charging and stock dividends and all of that. If you start trying to do some massive financial transaction for the sake of taking over a geographical area, you're going to send 12 million signals. It's going to be like hurling a, a, uh, a massive boulder into a small pond in terms of the ripple effect that's going to show up in the economy. Everyone's going to see it right away and is going to know exactly what you're up to and it's going to just stop paying you their money and you're going to collapse. So people, they're not going to do that.